Marie Pettis here at the Makers Fair, and I am in the Graffiti Research Lab with... Um, James Powderly. All right, James, tell me, what have you got here? So right now we're making LED throwies. We have all the ingredients for throwies, which are batteries, lithium batteries. Make sure you dispose of them properly. Um, you can actually look on our website, and you have a URL you can go to and look, punch the zip code in, and it'll tell you where you can dispose of these properly. We've got rare earth magnets. These are really strong. They can ruin your credit cards, um, but maybe that's a good thing. Um, and then LEDs. Mm -hmm. LEDs are kind of where the magic happens. And tape is uh, the glue that holds them all together. I've got a battery. You got a battery. That's the throwing. Okay, so we got a battery. We've got an LED. We'll start by making an electrical connection. <laughs> you already beat me to it. 50% chance of doing it wrong. Okay, so you got that right there. See if we can get some tape. So you want to cut a strip of tape about six inches. Once you have this guy good and tight, you want to start wrapping it. The tighter you wrap it, the better. Okay, there we go. Do it where you still have like a tail left on so the end. So you're leaving some there so that you can... Uh, so you continue wrapping. Yeah, so you only need one piece of tape. Exactly. So then you go ahead and you put your, your magnet there on the back of the bundle and just continue wrapping. And if you do this enough times, you become famous on the internet. And so uh, what are some things you could imagine doing with these? Well, uh, there's a lot I can imagine doing with them. Um, but the things we actually do with them is we go out and throw these on metal structures, ferromagnetic structures. So not stainless steel, not aluminum. Um, iron works great. Um, a lot of alloy steels work really well. And I live in New York City, so there's a lot of buildings made out of those materials. Are you going to do the Statue of Liberty? The Statue of Liberty is cast iron. It's a perfect example. We have, we have plans for the Statue of Liberty. We have designs, Excellent. many of them. But so we go out mostly and we, we go to neighborhoods where either, you know, you, you don't see a lot of uh, sort of public interaction with the environment and we, we put these up or in neighborhoods where, you know, it's in, in New York, there's a lot of neighborhoods that have really, really <clears throat> sort of sparse populations. They're very barren and uh, the people that live there typically you know, sort of try to run through their neighborhood uh, to get to places where other people are. Um, so we think, you know, if we can lighten up those neighborhoods a little bit, people will come there and enjoy it a little bit more. Or if we can just give people a chance to do something that's like definitely them altering their environment but in a semi-permanent way so that, you know, you get graffiti enthusiasts who are no longer sort of a select group of, you know, young people, typically, you know, boys. But, oh, thank you very much. But then you have graffiti artists who are young kids, tourists from out of town, you know, all sorts, political protesters, um, and it's, you know, they're very mediagenic, so if you end up writing, we also have a way that we can write with these, using what we call the night Rider, and we just bend them over and put them in this foam core board, and we have a really long pole, and we stick them on buildings so you can write text, and a lot of the political messages that we're interested in writing about are sort of making the public aware of how many graffiti artists are in jail for sort of serious long-term sentences for crimes that amount to, you know, scribbling on walls. Public art. Yeah, so, so uh, you know, for instance, uh, there's a gentleman who, he writes Borf, and he's actually just got out of prison in D.C. and is now serving trial in New York, so we go out and we write free Borf on buildings, metal buildings, and then we start throwing these LEDs around them, and the public gets involved, and they start asking questions, who's Borf, you know, why is this guy in jail, what did he do, and they end up in the end learning a little bit more about graffiti, and they kind of see why people would be moved to try to, like, change their environment. Um, and, and I assume change it so that it, there's people don't go to jail for making public art. Well, so, so we haven't gone to jail for this yet, and uh, probably that's because, you know, the cops, especially in New York City, are kind of, they're kind of curators, you know? If they like something, they don't arrest you. Um, and if they, if they don't like it, you end up going to jail. So they tend to like these because they're semi-permanent and um, actually they don't really recognize that it's not supposed to be there. I mean, people have the, the assumption that like technology is always supposed to be there. Um, and so, you know, these kind of fit the bill. 
Well, they either think it's always supposed to be there or it's a bomb, and this is clearly not going to hurt anybody. Yeah, so. I mean, it's, it's cute. Yeah, it's cute. We it, Actually, the term for it is QDD. QDD? QDD. I like that, QDD. Yeah, I mean, this isn't the only type of thing we do. We do a lot of different graffiti, or we come up with a lot of different graffiti tools. And, our, you know, our main goal is actually to make things that other people can use. Because we, you know, we like to think that we spend most of our time in the lab working, and when we're in the field, we're just sort of testing. And then ultimately, the people that are supposed to get up with these things are, you know, graffiti writers and street art enthusiasts, and, you know, not so much us. And uh, I saw somebody give you a dollar. What's that for? So, uh, you know, we're, we're letting people make throwies and throw them on the bus as much as they want. But if someone wants to take a throwy, we're just asking them to donate one dollar per throwy to the nonprofit that we work for called iBeam. And we work for a specific part of iBeam called the iBeam uh, R&D Open Lab, which is a lab that's dedicated to making like open source, public domain, creative technologies. So this is an example of creative technology. Other ones are like software that allows you to download your delicious links, or kits that allow you to make like uh, uh, persistence of vision art on your bicycle, things like that. So, so we all sort of get paid a small salary to do this sort of for a living for a year and then at the end of November they select a new crop of sort of research fellows. So be looking on the iBeam site, iBeam.org, eventually they'll have another application uh, period and, uh, and you can submit yours and you know, maybe become one of the uh, next One of these select few graffiti research lab, uh, what do you like? Well, we call ourselves GRL agents, um, and uh, you know the GRL agent family is growing now to be about uh, you know eight, nine, ten GRL agents, and hopefully you know these are the GRL agents of the future here. I mean, I'm sure their parents don't want them to become graffiti artists, but when they see this, maybe they'll realize that it's uh, not so bad. All right. Well, thanks for talking to me. I'm going to go ahead and finish up my little LED throwy and go throw it on your bus. This has been great talking to you. Yes, it's uh, a pleasure. I'm Bree Pettis, and we're signing off from the Make Magazine Makers Fair.